Well, um, let's get into today's topic. Be sure to follow us on social media at Jim Tara at Coach underscore Cassie RB on Instagram at Coach Cassie RB on Twitter. Today's episode, episode 58, we're breaking the myth of playing with heart. This this came from this this topic. It derived from when I was in high school. I had a coach who coached his kid. Uh, he wasn't the head coach. Um, but he coached his kid, um, who was a year older than me. The only reason, and maybe you ran into this too, um, as a player, but the only reason he was coaching his kid to make sure or that his kid um, got the, the benefit of the doubt and was well positioned. His kid didn't really go anywhere, but no, nonetheless, um, he would always say to us, play with heart. And I never knew what that meant. And now as I've gotten older and I've gotten to establish relationships and friendships with great coaches, um, anywhere from hitting coaches, pitching coaches, regular overall coaches. I understand that playing with heart is utter nonsense. And here's why, in my opinion, because I think that when you play with too much heart, you, you go out of body and you don't actually play well and you let your emotions take over and you, you throw away everything that you studied for all the advanced scouting reports. And we're talking in a baseball and softball sense here, throw away everything that helped get you there and everything that may help you win information wise, and of course, just on field stuff. Uh, and that's a problem. So when you play with too much heart, right? Well, I'm going to use that kind of an air quotes. I think that's fair, right? Playing with too much heart. I think that uh, you ultimately in the end are, are hurting yourself because you're not actually playing smart. And you might, you take the risk as a hitter of getting away from your approach. Yeah, and, think, and, and certainly the perception of what it means. And I think that's what you just alluded to. And you're saying, okay, I'm putting it in quotes here because I think to one person, it's you, you, you hear football players playing with heart. And even that, they, they have to manage their emotion. It's uh, the idea that you can't only just play with heart. You can't just have emotion be dictating, especially at those older levels, like everything that you do, right? And to your point, there's so much homework that goes into studying for a pitcher. And if you go up there gripping the bat like crazy, being like, that's it. I don't care where she throws it or he throws it. I'm just going to sweat. I'm going to crush this ball, whatever it may be. Then all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, what happened to your relaxed swing thought, positive visualizations, yeah. knowing you're looking for a middle outside pitch, like, right. You don't want that stuff to go out the window. Um, but you know, when I think of, um, you know, on the flip side of it, you have athletes sometimes who kind of just like, are kind of just there and showing up and they're maybe robots or like they're not diving after a ball that they they should have dove after and and you know maybe they're they're too in their head that they don't let some of that uh emotion come through so it, it is probably you know depending on your perception of it more like a bell curve right like we have you know too low we have too high and then we have this this sweet spot where we could probably operate pretty effectively but especially in, in a highly skill-based sport, a, a very cognitive sport, or just, I guess, maybe intellectual is maybe the better word, where you just need to keep your head on your sh shoulders to just say, like, hey, we're just going to go out there and play with heart and go get them. It, there's a, a little bit more to that, obviously. 